Nickerson. Um, sorry I didn't see you there. I was just so captivated by these nuclear reactors. Actually, come think of it, I'm not the only one who was astounded by these radioactive giants. In the late 1970s, the entire nation was captured by these nuclear reactors when a small film called The China Syndrome was released, stirring fear in the heart of every American regarding a pending nuclear meltdown. 多車又多,淨係講交通,我已經可以另外唱一首歌。No, the film wasn't actually about China. You see, in the wake of the Cold War, America was still very concerned with the nuclear state of things. Although the Treaty for the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, which attempted to prevent the spread of nuclear technologies, had been passed nearly a decade earlier, nuclear power plants had been around for well over 20 years. Um, nuclear concern began to escalate around the time this treaty was signed, beginning in 1971 with an article published by nuclear physicist Ralph Lapp in the New York Times. December 12, 1971, Ralph Lapp published an article he called Thoughts on Nuclear Plumbing, which expressed concern over an impending nuclear meltdown. Now, before we get into what his article was about, we must first understand how a nuclear reactor works. The following is a nuclear reactor. Most nuclear reactors require uranium to run properly. More specifically, most scientists use uranium-235 in building nuclear technology. But why uranium? Because uranium undergoes nuclear fission constantly and at a very slow rate. Now what is nuclear fission? Well, inside the reactor, the uranium particles decay, emitting alpha particles, which are bundles of a single proton and neutron bound together by nuclear force. Once these alpha particles hit the other atoms, the atom becomes unstable and explodes. This is called induced nuclear fission, and uranium is one of the few elements that allows for it. In nuclear reactor, uranium takes the form of small pellets, which are then placed into rods which are then wrapped into bundles and stuck in cold water. This allows the heat produced by a nuclear fission to turn the water into steam. This steam then is directed into a turbine, which spins a generator that produces electricity. Which brings us back to Lapp's article. Lapp feared that if the water inside the reactor, referred to as the reactor's coolant, was to ever dry up, the excessive amount of radioactive heat the uranium pellets were emitting would cause the reactor to overheat, burning a hole in the bottom of the reactor and entering the ground, contaminating water supplies and growing deep within the Earth's crust. He called this phenomenon the China Syndrome, stemming from the theory that such a meltdown would quote-unquote burn a hole to China. Eight years later, on March 16, 1979, a film was released worldwide called The China Syndrome, which revolved around the life of a female news reporter who witnessed a nuclear disaster at a Los Angeles power plant. However, the company responsible for the disaster was to keep it a secret to prevent liability issues. Here, let's take a look at a clip from that film. As I remember the control room layout, the enunciators they seem concerned with are also in the area of the core water level. I don't know, they might have come close to exposing the core. If that's true, then we came very close to the China syndrome. The what? If the core is exposed, for whatever reason, the fuel heats beyond core heat tolerance in a matter of minutes, nothing can stop it. And it melts right down through the bottom of the plant, theoretically to China. But of course, as soon as it hits groundwater, it blasts into the atmosphere and sends out clouds of radioactivity. The number of people killed would depend on which way the wind is blowing. Render an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable, not to mention the cancer that would show up later. Notice how the man says such a nuclear disaster would render an area the size of Pennsylvania uninhabitable. Ironically, only 12 days after this film was released, on March 28, 1979, America saw one of its worst nuclear disasters in its history occur Dauphin County, Pennsylvania. The incident became known as Three Mile Island Incident, in which nuclear reactor 
ultimately shut down and lost almost all of its coolant. Now the coolant is what keeps the reactor from overheating. And this led to high pressure pumps to pump replacement coolant back into the system, but ultimately this just led to higher water pressure. And similarly, this is exactly what happened in the movie at China Syndrome. And like in the movie, the workers tried desperately to lower that water pressure so they wouldn't damage the plant. Ultimately, their efforts failed, and the damage done at Three Mile Island totaled roughly $973 million. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Everybody keep your station! Everybody keep your station! Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome. Was there a coincidence? Did we know the risk before the accident? People seem to think so. And like the trailer predicted, people were terrified of the China Syndrome. They were terrified to think that a nuclear disaster could spell the end of the entire city. They were scared to think that nuclear corporations would cover up such incidents just to prevent liability issues. I mean, after all, why would they let Three Mile Island happen if they knew what a risk it was? This led many people to distrust nuclear corporations. In May of 1979, a protest rally was held in Washington, D.C., which 65,000 people attended. In September of that same year, another rally was held in New York City. The protest continued up until the early 1990s, when the Cold War finally ended and the Soviet Union collapsed. It is due to these protests that we don't have nearly as many nuclear power plants in America as we would have if these protests had not happened. So let's recap. In 1971, nuclear physicist Ralph Lapp published an article in the New York Times called Thoughts on Nuclear Plumbing, which coined the term China Syndrome and expressed his concern in the potential for a worldwide nuclear meltdown. In 1979, a film titled after this theory was released, bringing to light the nightmare which Lapp described. The public believed that this was fictionalized drama based on unnecessary concern, but after the Three Mile Island disaster in Pennsylvania, their worst fears were quickly rationalized. This nuclear disaster rattled America, proving Ralph Lapp right in suggesting that the nuclear power companies were aware of these risks but chose to ignore them. This led to even further protests, protests that lasted up through the 90s. It is due to these protests that nuclear power isn't as popular today as it would have been if these protests had never occurred. Well, that's our show. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments section of this video. For now, I'm Tyler Nickerson, and this has been Stuck in the China Syndrome. See you next time.